Today we're going to be installing a louder horn because honestly, this horn, I can't tell when I press the button, it's so quiet. I've got my earplugs in, the exhaust going, I'm going down the road, I can't tell if this thing's even honking. It's literally that bad. So the factory horn right here. So um, we're gonna find a place to hide this. This is the Denali Sound Bomb. Picked this up off of Twisted Throttle for a pretty decent price. It says it's 120 decibels. So it says a uh, standard automotive horn is 100. Other horns are 110, there's 120. I've seen them up to 135, so I don't know what they're bragging about. But anyways, 120 should be good. It's called the Sound Bomb, so. Anyways, the reason I picked this particular one is it's a two-piece unit. You see, we got a compressor here and the horn here. And it's a two-tone two horn. And it's supposed to be fairly compact. So, it'll, being two-piece, it'll be easier to hide this thing. So, I guess uh, got a nice relay so it can get power straight off the battery. Get a little bit of mounting hardware. Here's the compressor. So... Got a hose output here, power leads come in here, and this is for mounting it. I'm hoping I can just stick this under the seat somewhere, keep it out of sight. I don't want this. See, I've seen some people where they get the, the combined unit, where these are both in one, and then they go and stick it right here, like literally right there. So it's blocking, you know, the nice Indian eye logo and the nice looking valve cover. And it's like, come on guys, have a little taste. So. My, my idea is not too much better, but we're gonna try a couple of spots. Um, so we got this hose in the way here, but if I can get get this thing in here, I'd kind of like to uh, squeeze it in right here. That's one idea I had. Another idea I had was hang it down here or something. No, uh, that kind of looks stupid. Almost put it under the headlight. I don't know. We're gonna find something and uh, you're not going to follow along while I do it. I'll come back to you when I'm done. I've got a bracket in here. I'm using the, uh, the mount hole that you would bolt the crash guards into. So let me show you this awful bracket I came up with. I went and scoured my garage for a piece of uh, sheet metal or, you know, a bracket that I could use. This came off a garage door latch cut off the uh, the elbow that was on there. So I can bolt this on there. And then the horn itself is gonna bolt here. Now, what's gonna be interesting is getting this in. This is a really tight fit. You can see I had to pull the hose away. And uh, it only fits if I rotate the horn just right. And then once it's in there, um, I can rotate it back so that this bracket side is here. So it puts it right where this bracket's gonna be. So you are gonna be able to see this bracket, which isn't gonna look quite as good as I'd like it to. Maybe I'll come back through with some paint, some hand black, some hand paint, paint it black. Anyways, yeah, it's gonna be right at the end of its travel. This is a bit of a warm area on this bike, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I think it'll be able to withstand the heat. It's not gonna be pressed against the exhaust or anything, so it should be okay. So, first thing I gotta do is get this out of here. I gotta get this mostly bolted in. Then I gotta, another problem is this bolt is uh, a little bit longer than it needs to be, but oh well. So, I'll bolt this in mostly tight. It's most of the way tight by hand. I've, what's going to be another problem is I've gotta get this in here while the horn's in the way and get it tight in the rest of the way. So, all kinds of tight fits. Anyways, so this bracket's gonna reduce the amount of space I have in here. So I need to cut it off there and drill a hole here. So let me mark that spot and I can cut this thing even shorter so less of it's in my way. That's where I need to drill the hole. So it's gonna be installed in this orientation, the outlets of the horn, and go right through the radiator. As in the sound will go through the radiator. I'm not gonna punch a hole in the radiator or anything. 
sure it may block a little bit of the airflow through the radiator, but it'll be fine. All right, I have shortened the uh, bracket. As you can see, it's now that long. Tucks in there a little bit better. Now, the hole is right about the middle of the horn. Nice and easy. I'll take this screw and there's actually a triangular rubber bracket around here somewhere. I'm gonna walk. There it is. Okay. Still haven't read the instructions, but it's become obvious that this thing is triangular shaped. And this is supposed to go over that and adapt it to the triangular shape. There we go. I have to get this screw into this bracket in this tight space. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Very nice. Now I put the nut on here. It's got a uh, nylock nut. If you thought this was hard, wait until we have to find somewhere to stick the compressor. So this hose used to go inside this channel down here, and uh, it's not going to currently, unless I can disconnect it from that end. I'll have to pull this cover off and see. But I'd like to tuck it back underneath everything after I get the horn mounted. Um, this looks like a 10, so I'll get a 10, and then I just have to get an Allen on that. Let's see if I can do that now, actually. Maybe if I come in from the other side. Good and snug. That bracket's not going to go anywhere now. Uh, this thing is in a relatively good spot. Let's we'll see how it does after I tighten this down. I think it'll pull it this way a little bit. <coughs> All right, so 10. All right, so the horn is now mounted, and I think it's going to be fine there. Yep, the fan is not in the way of that at all. It's going to blow right through the radiator. And this hose now goes on here. Anyways, so this hose is going to follow that one up and uh, head on back. Yeah, so if I put it under the seat or something similar to that, like I'm thinking of, it'll reach just fine. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. There's no room here for this thing. This is huge. Yeah, maybe if I had gone with a half-size lithium battery, but then I wouldn't have gotten the extra cranking amps I needed. So this is not going to fit up here, but I just found an awesome place for this. Hold up a sec. All right, there's no way I can get a tripod down here. Anyways, we're under the exhaust. Here's the bike's rectifier. Here's my uh, guardian bell, gremlin bell, whatever you want to call it. And you see these two spots? I think they're supposed to be like a charcoal canister. It's in places this bike didn't get. So, we take this. I'm just gonna kind of set it in there. See that? fits in there like a freaking glove. So we're gonna put the, the air compressor right there. I'll run a little piece of metal across here, put a hole in it to catch the bracket for that. And then poof, yeah, a little light right across here. And then it'll catch that. And this will hang right in here. We can catch the power leads that are on the bottom of this thing. See that, those two power leads. That'll come out through like this hole or you know, around here. Go up, catch the Actually, I can go straight up to the uh, fuse box and I can catch the horn and the relay and yeah, no problems. After having a couple of days to think about this, I actually think that this spot is for the ABS module on Scouts with ABS. So if you have one of the Scouts with ABS, the next best place I could think of to put this compressor is if you've put an aftermarket intake on. You've got that great big chamber in, that the old intake used to go to in the fort, or in the front of the frame, anyways. So pop your gas tank off, throw the compressor in there, and it'll be a nice short run for your your hose. You'll have to run. It'll even be a short run for power aside from putting in the relay. But yeah, that that's a 
best guess I have for a bike with ABS, if I'm right about that spot that I'm using here. All right, so I just showed you the two bolt bosses underneath. I have these leftover screws from when I did the uh, steering lock in my previous video, in one of my previous videos. So these are gonna be long enough to get through this thin aluminum bar. I cut it down to the right length to reach between those. And I took this piece of paper and I pr held it up under there with some dirty fingers. I made a rubbing of the two bolt holes. So now I can just place it on here and center punch in the middle of those, drill them out, and the bolts might actually line up. Probably won't. This is not the greatest way to do it, but it works for me. So let's see if this works out. All right, center punch. Let's see, I got those holes pretty well centered. There we go. I'm gonna go take this back to my bench and drill it. Two holes. This is just some aluminum bar I bought ages ago and I had it in the garage, so it'll work. It's a little thinner than I might like, but I think it'll hold the compressor just fine. These uh, screws fit perfectly through quarter inch holes. Um, I don't remember what size threads these are, but uh, I mentioned it in the last video. Anyways, it was just some kind of metric, small eight millimeter maybe. Anyways, so we'll get that bolted up and uh, make sure that these two holes align properly and I don't need to like bore them out or something to get them to reach. And as long as that's good, we can move on to uh, drilling a hole for the horn to mount, or the compressor, horn compressor to mount to. So unfortunately it's near impossible to uh, get some video of me working down here. So there's the bar and as you can see first try I got both the holes in just the right spot. That little rubbing method works pretty darn well actually. So now I'm gonna hang the, I'm gonna hold up the compressor behind here and get a rough idea of where to put its hole. But I'm not gonna get that on video. Secured. I need to go back and put some Loctite on the threads of these two um, screws that are holding it in. Tapered. Tapered head is probably not the right thing for here, but you know, it works for now. Um, you know, this aluminum bar is nice and rigid. The pump is in there very solid. I'm pulling on it pretty hard right now and it's not going anywhere, so that's great. So I'm just going to run this hose up and it'll come up under the seat and uh, run to the horn up front. It's going to run up and over everything. Obviously you can't run anything under the engine since there is no frame under the engine. So it's going to go up and over. We'll do that now. The air hose that came with this kit wasn't long enough to reach from the pump down here all the way to the horn up there if I'm coming from above. So I picked up a little bit of quarter inch fuel line because I wasn't sure it was going to fit around the horn up here. It might have. And then I got some uh, hose connectors, some just generic. So, so what I'm working on right now is getting that in, in there. I put the, the fuel line on the compressor and it's going to come up and join this stuff which I fished down. It comes down uh, behind the battery, comes around the frame here, around the swing arm that is. And uh, it's impossible to film any of this down here. So I fished it all the way down to the compressor, the, the hard line that comes with it. And I've connected the two together. Boy, well, that doesn't stick very well, but I'll put a hose clamp on it. Now I'm just gonna pull it back up. It's easier said than done. All right, so there's the fuel line from the compressor. still on it. Yeah, it's still on it properly. Okay. Now it's going to squeeze around the swing arm and come up by the battery. Whoops. Well, that, that worked wonderfully. Uh, Got to get a clamp on that real quick. In hindsight, I probably could have just done fuel line the whole way, but uh, I think that this will uh, be good enough. I just wasn't sure it would fit on the horn itself and I'd already installed the horn. All right, let's go up above and see if I can see where that's coming through at. Yeah, I see it. All right, got a whole bunch of wires in the way. Just have to keep feeding it up, come on. Nope. So 
this hard line for the horn appears to be about seven millimeter because quarter inch is slightly larger than six millimeter and it, it fits the uh, the stuff fine but this quarter millimeter or quarter inch fitting here is not big enough for this hose not quite big enough anyways I'll grab a hose clamp for that so it reaches this far which isn't bad I probably should have fished the wire up with it while I was at it I'll have to do that separate this is the power wire for the horn once I get this run to the horn we'll test it out Loctite. I don't want to forget to put that on the threads that hold the compressor. I don't want the compressor falling off and running it over. Because somehow I know it will do that if I don't. I'll probably be in front of the camera blocking it most of the time. But yeah, I'm routing this. I kind of shoved it up above the frame, or between the head and this frame rail. And now I'm going to try and get it up over this throttle body area. And maybe just back here. bit at a time. There we go. And there we go. We're, we're there. We are on the horn there. And I just, I still need to get this routed back in the, behind everything. All right, I got a little spade terminal on these two ground leads. I think one of them's going to the guard dog. The other one's going to the horn. So there's the ground lug on the bike. I just need to tighten this up. There we go. Now this will go to the horn relay that I'm going to toss under here. I do have enough room for a horn relay down here. Just barely, really. Squeeze it in here. Catch some... Uh, power and fuse it. Maybe I'll catch power up there. I don't know. All right, we are going to do a test. I'm going to move the camera and microphone back uh, about as far as I possibly can actually. 20-25 feet. I'll let you know when I measure it out. All right, looks like I can get about 17 feet behind the bike. That'll have to do. Or kind of up against my car's back bumper, so there might be some sound reflection, but whatever. I'm directly behind the bike, not off to either side. So let's test the original horn, and then we'll test the air horn, and see what the decibel readings are. So the new horn came with a relay and we're just going to get the wires off the old horn and run them up to the relay. The relay is going to just use a low current from the original horn to trigger the relay and the relay will supply power from the battery straight to the horn. So, six. Just one Allen key. This horn has to come off every time you change the oil, so this is kind of an annoying place for it anyways. There we go. And I'm about to change the oil probably later today. So almost 20,000 miles on the bike. So this horn wire comes through here. So I can just get my finger around it. I can pull it up. There we go. And just like we did with the, uh, the horn airline, we have to run this all up and over because there's no room under the engine for anything to run. All right, so we can get that far. So I need maybe two and a half feet of wire to get the rest of the way. So I'm gonna run this behind the horn like I wish I could do with this hose and uh, it'll be fun. Just need a couple of spades to plug into there. Let's go make those real quick. All right, here we go. Doesn't look great. I'm gonna wrap some electrical tape around this to kind of hide it a little bit better. Needle duck back there. This will come across, and I got more than enough to reach under the seat. Just some uh, red and black wire I twisted together with my drill, 
and uh, a little tape and it'll be all covered up and hidden and uh, blend in. I don't have this fancy wrap that they, uh, oh, you can't see it on camera here. Yeah, this, this nice stuff, I don't have any of that and I don't feel like buying it just for this job, so we'll just use electrical tape. All right, so this is the power wire coming up from the horn down below and I can trim it shorter. Here's the two wires coming back from the horn, horn wire up at the front of the bike. I still need to get some zip ties on that at the front of the bike. So it looks halfway decent, but for now it's good enough. So anyways, um, yeah, it's, it's routed properly. It's just, it needs to be tied down so it's not flopping. And the final thing I'll need to do is put in a fuse. Um, I'll tap in here and uh, put a fuse holder in and that will go to the output on the relay. So we've got 85 and 86. So 85 and 86, these will be these two wires from the old horn trigger and uh, power in and power out to the new horn. So pretty simple. And this thing's just gonna sit down here. I'll probably wrap the terminals with some tape so nothing gets on them. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna shorten this at all. I'm gonna leave a little bit of excess here in case I ever need to toss it out of my way while I'm working in here. Rice grips, very versatile. It's got this, this squeezing point in the middle and it's not the kind that's meant to cut things. Or well, maybe it is, but it does a good enough job for crimping. Oh, 87 and 30. Okay, 85 and 86. This relay is kind of set up different than most. At least a court, uh, it's rotated. And it's throwing me off a little bit. Uh, actually, I'm going to pull this off. Rotate it. There we go. Now, final one will be battery power, and then we'll have a working, freaking loud horn. Uh, sound bomb. All right, I have this spare um, pigtail for a uh, battery tender, and it came with a seven and a half inch, or seven and a half amp fuse in a nice fuse holder. So I'm just gonna cut it here, and we'll use that as a positive feed to the relay. All right, here it is. Got a nice connector on the end of it. So this goes to the final lead on the relay. And then it's just gonna hook up there. Um, I could go down to the battery, but I've already got so many things hooked to the battery, I'm just going to catch it up here instead. Um, in fact, if I really want to get fancy, I can fish it through here. Um, where I like the bottom side of this. There we go. And now I can still put this um, protective terminal over it. Yeah, there we go. So let me get a wrench for that. All right, my poor camera in the sunny day here. It's probably gonna overheat in a minute. All right, this is in from the battery. The other side's out to the starter. There's a starter solenoid that I'm tapping off of. It's a good source of constant power. All right, so here's the overview. This is what the bike looks like from the side. You can see that horn's tucked in there nicely. That hose, I'd kind of rather have it run behind the horn, but short of disconnecting both ends, it's not going to happen. There's no way I could squeeze that horn in there with it back there. I see a lot of these where they get the horn and the compressor in a single unit and they stick it right here. So that thing's really hanging out. My mind's way more tucked. Okay, okay. the relay's right here and the fuse holder's here. And this can just kind of tuck in here. It'll be fine. It's all going to fit under the seat, no problem. And uh, then the compressor, as I showed you guys, it's just, you can't see it. I mean, it's way, way up under here, guys. So, and I can't see the screen on my camera right now because it's just overheating in the sun really bad. So, I think that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, ride safe.